Hi guys, my name is Dan and I will be your TutorBox accounting tutor for the duration of the COVID-19 catch-up sessions. I am a 19-year-old student at Stellenbosch University, studying first year bachelors of accounting with the intention of going the CA route. I finished matric in 2018 at Maritzburg College, a well-known boys' school in KZN. Thereafter, I took a gap year where I did various internships and traveled across Southeast Asia for two months. I am super excited to be part of this initiative and I hope that I'll be able to help you in your accounting. This is just a quick overview as to what will be discussed in today's lesson. So in part one of this lesson, we will look at financial statements. So we will focus on the income statement, balance sheet, as well as the notes that pertain to both the income statement and the balance sheet. And then in part two of this lesson, we will look at the matching concept and we'll explore what this concept is and what it is about. And then we will do a few basic examples relating to the matching concept. So we will look at accrued income, we will look at deferred income and we will look at accrued expenses as well as prepaid expenses and then we will go on to like one or two harder examples that you will get tested or examined upon. In order to introduce financial statements, we need to ask ourselves a few questions. The first of these questions is, what are financial statements? So, financial statements are the consolidation of a business's transactions. If I was to come up to you with a box of all the transactions relating to a business and asked you to tell me how well or how badly this company is doing, you would find this task almost impossible. Financial statements consolidate these transactions into an easy to read and easy to interpret format. This will be for the period of a financial year and record all the relevant assets, liabilities, incomes and expenses of that year. Financial statements are created under the GARP principles. GARP stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Practices. Businesses are required by law to abide by these standards and it creates uniformity across the accounting world. If you looked at the financial statements of, uh, of a company in Spain and the financial statements of a company in South Africa, they will both follow the same guidelines and have the same format. The next question is, why do we create financial statements? So all businesses need to be measured. So the reason we create financial statements is to see how well a company does. So you'll look at the business uh, at the beginning of its life and at the end of its life, and we'll see how well it has performed. However, this period is generally measured in financial years because a business's, a business's life could be 100 years and we would like to know how well it does over the course of a year. And the next question would be, what do financial statements consist of? So first off, we have the income statement. So this will consist of all the incomes and expenses relating to a company for a certain financial year. Then we have the balance sheet. This will relate to all the assets and the liabilities of a business for a certain financial year. And then we have notes. Notes pertain to extra information of that company. This information you won't see in the income statement and the balance sheet. So now we'll be looking at the layout of financial statements of a sole trader. The resource that I am using is the Grade 10 Via Africa Study Guide. If you'd like access to the study guide, simply type Via Africa Grade 10 Study Guide in your Google search bar and hit the relevant link. So first off, we'll be going through the income statement. So the income statement records all the incomes and expenses of a business for the current financial year. And it starts off with sales. So this is actually should be the net sales amount. And to get the net sales amount, you'll take sales minus your debtors allowances okay and then we need to calculate our gross profit for the year and to calculate our gross profit we simply take sales and you minus your cost of sales amount to get gross profit the next account that will be totaled up is your other operating income this basically totals up all income that is separate to your sales income so such as rent income or commission income and you'll just total all these amounts and you'll get your other operating income amount for the year 
and you will want to use this amount to calculate your gross operating income for the year. To get your gross operating income for the year, you'll take your gross profit amount and you'll add your other operating income amount to get your gross operating income amount. Next we have operating expenses accounts, which is your expenses for the financial year, such as salaries or wages or bad debts. And these amounts will all be totaled up. And remember, expenses are a negative amount. And then we want to calculate our operating profit or our operating loss for the year. And to get this, you'll take your gross operating income and you'll minus your operating expenses. And that will give you your operating loss for the year or your operating profit. And then we'd like to calculate our profit or our loss before interest expense. So to get this, you'll take your operating profit and you'll add your interest income. Remember that interest income is your first note. The next amount that we want to calculate is our net profit or our net loss for the year. To get this, you'll take your profit or your loss before interest expense and you'll add your interest expense, uh, you'll minus your interest expense and you'll get your net profit or loss for the year. Remember, interest expense is our second note. And net profit or net loss for the year is in note 7. This basically needs to be carried over after you have completed your income statement to note 7 to calculate other final amounts. Here's just a quick recap of the income statement. So all interests, whether income or expenses, should be shown at the end of the income statement in order to determine how much interest was, was received and paid. Basically, financial statements just want clarity, so they want you to show income and expenses relating to interest to be shown separately to normal or general income or expenses so that we can have a better idea of how much interest was paid or how much interest was received. Over here, this is a quick recap of what I pertain to in the income statement. Net sales is equal to sales minus debtors allowances. Gross profit is equal to sales minus cost of sales. Gross operating income minus operating expenses is equal to operating profit. Operating profit is equal to interest income, which is equal to profit before interest expense. And then net profit is equal to profit before interest expense minus interest expense. And net profit should be carried over to note 7. That I explained to you over here. And just to recap, it's where your net profit amount is taken over to note 7 to calculate other final amounts. Next, we will look at the balance sheet of a sole trader. So your balance sheet contains your assets, equity, and your liabilities. So the first amounts that we have to calculate will pertain to assets, and assets can be split into two categories, non-current assets and current assets. Your non-current assets are assets that are relevant for 12 months or longer. So this will pertain to fixed assets, which pertains to accounts such as vehicles or equipment. And then you have financial assets, so in this case they've stated a fixed deposit as their financial asset, but this de fixed deposit must be relevant for more than 12 months. An example of this is they put 50,000 Rand into a fixed deposit for 3 years. And then we get our current assets. So current assets are assets that are relevant in less than 12 months. So for example this will be inventories. Inventories will include amounts relating to trading stock or consumable stores on hand. Then you get trade and other receivables. So this will pertain to amounts that you expect to receive in the current year. An example of this is debtors. And then you have cash and cash equivalent amounts. So your cash and cash equivalent amounts will pertain to amounts such as your bank or your petty cash. Then we'd have to calculate our total asset amounts. And in order to get that, you'll say non-current assets plus current assets is equal to total assets. The next thing we look at is equity and liabilities. So note seven, which is equity looks at amounts pertaining to your not your net profit and to capital and then you'll move on to your liabilities and that can be split into two so you'll have your non-current liabilities and your current liabilities non-current liabilities relate to liabilities that are relevant for 12 months or longer an example that they used is a mortgage bond so that means that that mortgage bond will be payable over a certain period of time and that period of time is most likely to be 20 or 25 years and then you will have your current liabilities so in this account you'll have trade and other payables so 
This will relate to accounts such as creditors or tax that you have to pay in the next financial year. And then you'll have a bank overdraft or a short term loan. So that both of these will be need, will need to be paid in less than 12 months and therefore our current liabilities. And then in order to get our total equity and liabilities, you will add your equity amount, your non-current liability amount, and your current liability amount to get your total equity and liabilities. So I'm quite sure that you guys remember the accounting equation. Uh, A is equal to O plus L, so assets is equal to owner's equity plus liabilities. So in this case, total assets must equal to your total equity and liabilities. Now we will look at the layout of the notes to the financial statements. So the first note is interest income, and this will be found in your income statement or transfer it across to your income statement if you like. So this is all interest that is earned on fixed deposits, or saving accounts, or bank accounts. And basically you just total this amount up and then you'll get your total number and you will put this into your income statement. The next note we have is interest expense note. This is the exact opposite of interest income note. So this is interest that we have to pay on loans or on overdrafts. And this amount is also found in the income statement and transferred across. The next note is probably the most important note that you'll need to know in grade 10. And this is the fixed asset note. This note carries the highest weighting of anything uh, when it comes to financial statements in grade 10. So this is a note that you should know very well. I will give a brief explanation of what this note is in this lesson. However, in the next lesson, I'll go over in this in more detail and I'll do some worked examples relating to this note. So first off, we will record the cost price of all our assets. So for example, land and buildings, equipment or vehicles, and then we will have our accumulated depreciation. I'm pretty sure you guys know what depreciation is, but I'll just explain the concept very quickly. So over time, assets get old and they get dusty and they don't work that well. So we have to depreciate it because it's not worth as much. It's, it's like you have a car that's 20 years old. It's not worth the same value it was worth 20 years ago. So you have to depreciate this amount. And there are two different methods of depreciation. And I will explain those to you in the next lesson. So accumulated depreciation basically means how much is this depreciation amount over time? So this is all the depreciation for the life of this asset, excluding this current financial year. And then we'd like to calculate our carrying value. So how do you calculate your carrying value? Cost price minus accumulated depreciation is equal to carrying value. So this first section relates to last year's uh, fixed assets. And then you'll have the movements. So this relates to any movements that have happened in this current financial year for those assets. So you'll have additions at cost. So how much more have we bought of a certain asset? And then we'll have our assets disposal at carrying value. Remember assets are always disposed at carrying value. We have to dispose them at the value that they're actually worth. So a true value. And then we will add our depreciation for the current financial year. Depreciation is an expense account where accumulated depreciation is a negative asset. And uh, then you can use those figures to calculate your carrying value. However, this can be a little bit confusing as you have your additions as well as your disposals. So you have to factor those in, but I'll explain those to you in the next financial, I mean, in the next lesson. And uh, then we can just calculate our cost price, accumulated depreciation, and our carrying value at the end of our current year. And I'll explain that as well in the next lesson. Uh, then we move on to inventories. So this is a note that we find in our balance sheet. It's a very straightforward note. We have our trading stock. The only adjustment that you'll have to focus on here is uh, whether like a trading stock surplus or trading stock deficit. And then we'll have consumable stores on hands. That is also a, an adjustment. Um, and then note five is trading other receivables. So this means everything that we expect to receive in the current financial year. This will relate to accounts such as trade debtors, which is your debtors control minus your discounts allowed. Um, and then you have accrued income and prepaid expenses. I will touch on these in the second part of the lesson and explain exactly what those are. 
Then note six, we have cash and cash equivalents. So this relates to accounts such as your savings account or bank, petty cash, cash float. And over here, you can see that they have fixed deposit as an example. So fixed deposits are generally not cash and cash equivalent. However, if a portion of that fixed deposit is maturing, maturing means it'll be paid out in the next 12 months, then it will be a cash and cash equivalent. Note seven is part of the income statement. And this requires a little bit of work when you actually work inside the note. So we'll have our balance at the beginning of the year, any additional capital contributed by the owner, the net profit or the loss from the year, you'll either get this amount from your income statement or into alia, you will take that amount, uh, this amount that you find or that you, uh, that you uh, work out over here and put that in your income statement. And then you'll have any drawings by the owner and then you can calculate your balance at the end of the year. And our last note is the trade and other payables note. So this will relate to trade creditors, any accrued expenses or income received in advance. I will touch on these two accounts in the next part of our lesson. Then we have our uh, SARS account, uh, which is like PAYE, pay as you earn, UIF, which is the unemployment insurance fund. And then you also have creditors for salaries and pension fund and medical aid fund. These all relate to a specific transaction. Uh, if I have time in the next lesson, I will try and explain that to you. And um, that is basically all the notes that you need to know. Um, yeah, you should know them off by heart. Unfortunately, that, that is the case. And uh, the only way to really learn them is to practice and practice. And that's literally it. I can't tell you anything else. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure that you guys are getting bored in quarantine. So I thought that I would share some of my Netflix suggestions with you. However, after I give you my suggestions, you will have to do a quick quiz. And if you guys have any questions that you would like to ask me pertaining to the work that we've covered, please could you leave them in the comment section below. Uh, so I'll just first find my list. It's supposed to be all the way at the bottom. The Wi-Fi is being pretty slow, so I'll get there in a second. Okay, perfect. So my list. I would 110% recommend Friends. If you're missing the homies, just give it a watch. Maybe some of your good memories will come back. Um, Six Underground, really good action movie that I recently watched. Escape Room is a really, really good th thriller. It's not scary, like it's not a haunted movie, but it's, it's a good thriller. The Witcher, super good. I watched the first eight episodes, or like the first season in like six hours i don't even think that's possible but i did it and classic rick and morty pickle rick for life and uh if you haven't watched brooklyn 99 yet, yet guys you have not lived i would 100 percent recommend that um so now we'll go off to a quick quiz and i will see you after the break
Hi everybody, welcome back to part two of lesson one. I will quickly introduce you to the matching concept. So a definition of this is all incomes and expenses must be recorded in their relevant financial period. So let me simplify this with an example. Say for instance, I am company ABC and I rent a property from company XYZ and I decide, hey, I have quite a lot of money, I can pay you for the first six months of next year's rent. But however, I cannot record this in my financial statements because it's not relevant to this financial year, it's relevant to next year's finances. So in this sense, I will have to credit my rent expense and I will have to debit prepaid expenses. However, I'll go to an example uh, that's more relevant uh, in the next slide that I do. So the matching concept is one of the seven GARP principles that you'll learn throughout grade 10 to grade 12 and the adjustments that relate to matching concepts are accrued income as well as prepaid expenses and we also get uh, so accrued income and prepaid expenses these are found in the trade under receivables note and we get accrued expenses and deferred income and these are found in trade and other payables note so accrued, accrued income is income that we still need to receive. An example of this is debtors. Prepaid expenses are expenses paid in advance. That can relate to my uh, rent expense example that I showed you in the definition. And then we will have accrued expenses. These are expenses that we still need to pay for the current financial year. And deferred income, which is income that we have received in advance, so this income should be for the next financial year, however, we've received it in this financial year. Okay, so let's have a look at accrued income now. So we have an example adjustment relating to accrued income to explain it. 3,000 Rand of commission income is outstanding for the current financial year. So what does this mean? This means that we are still owed 3,000 Rand in commission for this financial year. However, we have a problem because we have now reached the end of the financial year and we still haven't been paid this amount. So what do we do about this? In this sense, we have to create an accrued income account because we have earned this money, however, we've not been paid this money. So what you'll do is you'll create your accrued income account and you'll add 3,000 rand to that and then you have to increase your commission income account because in our commission income account, we only have the money that we have received and not the money that we should have received. So how do we record this in our financial statements? We will credit commission income by 3,000 Rand to increase it, and we will debit our accrued income. This is found in our trade and other receivables note. Okay, let's have a look at prepaid expenses. So our example, or adjustments example for prepaid expenses says, 4,500 Rand, where's my mouse gone? 4,500 Rand in rent expense has been paid for the following financial year. So what does this mean? This means that we have paid 4,500 Rand for the next financial year in rent. So how will we treat this when it comes to our financial statements? So basically, we create an account called prepaid expenses because this information is not relevant to this financial year and is only relevant to the next financial year because we'll only be utilizing the money that we spent for the rent in the next financial year when we use the rental premises and then we have to we will have to decrease our rental amount by 4500 rand because this is what we have said that we have paid for this current financial year but this 4500 rand is actually not for this current financial year it's for the next current it's for the next financial year so how do we record this in our financial statements? We will debit our prepaid expense, and this is found in our trade and other receivables note, and we will credit our rent expense. Remember, we have to credit it to decrease this amount because this amount is not actually used in this financial year. It'll only really be used in the next financial year. Let's look at accrued expenses now. So an accrued expense is an expense that we still need to pay. So the adjustment relating to this example says 2,200 Rand in delivery costs are still payable for the current financial year. So what does this mean? 
This basically means that we still owe 2,200 grand to the delivery company for this current financial year. However, we are now at the end of the current financial year. So what will we do? So we need to create an accrued expense account in order to state that yes we are aware that we still owe this amount of money however we haven't paid it and we have to still record it as an expense because it's relative this, to this current financial year we cannot just leave it out so the way we record this is by creating this accrued expense which means that we acknowledge that we still have to pay this amount and then increasing our delivery costs amount so how do we record this in our financial statements we will debit delivery costs because we have to increase our delivery cost amount for the current financial year and we will credit our accrued expense by 2200 rand in acknowledgement that yes we have to pay this 2200 rand in delivery costs although we have not okay so let's have a look at a deferred income example so deferred income is income that we have received in advance so the adjustment relating to this says 1,600 Rand in rent income has been received for the following financial year. So what, what does this mean? This means that we have received 1,600 Rand in rent income, but that this income is only for next year. And we are at the end of this year currently, or at the end of the f current financial year. So how will we record this? So we need to create an account called deferred income. To acknowledge the fact that we have received this money but that it isn't relevant to this financial year so basically we will create this account and then we have to decrease our rent income amount that we have received for this current financial year so we will minus a thousand six hundred rand from our rent income account and this will be shown in this specific manner in your financial statements so you will debit your rent income Remember, normally when you receive rent, you credit to increase, so now you'll debit it to decrease it. So you'll debit it with 1,600 Rand, and you will credit your deferred income with 1,600 Rand to acknowledge that you've received this amount, but that it isn't relevant to this financial year. And this will be shown in your trade and other payables note. So now let us look at a harder example. This is an example that you'll be able to find in your tests or in your exams and uh, i'm embracing my inner 10 year old and i'm using paint please bear with me i'm not the best paint user in the world i have no artistic talent whatsoever so commission income in the books of pete's printing for the financial year ending on the 28th of february 2018 amounts to 12,000 rand dan's donuts are supposed to pay them a thousand five hundred rand per month no entry has been made so here we have to differentiate between the amount that we have and the amount that we are supposed to have so I'm going to say W for what we have is equal to 12,000 Rand so this we know this because they say commission income in the books of Pete's printing amounts to 12,000 Rand so that is what we have and that is what we have recorded that we have and the amount that we are supposed to have is Dan's Donuts are supposed to pay one them 1,500 Rand a month so them is obviously Pete's printing, so that is equal to 18,000 Rand, which is 1,500, multiplied by 12. And then what we need to do is we need to get the difference between these two amounts to calculate what we are missing in a sense. So that'll be 18,000 minus 12, and that'll be 6,000. I'm sorry, I know it looks like a high school chimney sum where you add it up that uh, is definitely not the case I'm just actually saying minus and uh, so now we know that 6,000 Rand is the amount that we need to create an account for so what accounts are we going to create so we have not received this amount so that means that it will be a accrued income so an accrued income is an income that is to be received so we will need to debit our accrued income so we would debit i'm just going to say ac for short accrued income with 6000 rand because we need to acknowledge that we should have received this money however 
we haven't received it yet and we will credit our commission income because we should have received this money however it's not in our account but it does relate to this current financial year and we credit it because we have to increase it remember incomes increase on the credit side so we'll credit I'm gonna call this CI commission income and we will credit that with 6,000 Rand Oof, sorry this is very bad and that is our harder works example thank you for joining me for today's lesson I hope that you guys were able to learn something um, in the next lesson we will look at fixed assets so we'll look at the specific treatment of fixed assets in terms of general ledger so when we are selling a fixed asset and then we'll also do the same but in the fixed asset notes um, and hopefully we'll have time to get to adjustments I'm not too sure though and uh, that's okay if we do not because I'm creating a document that will show you all the relevant uh, adjustments from grade 10 to matric and that's quite a good building block I would definitely print it out if I were you and just look off over it before a test or an exam uh, if that test is on financial statements and there are adjustments in that test um, and now we will move on to the Q&A session It's not a matter of whether or not we can. Everybody can, but not everybody will. How to turn nothing into something. How tangible are ideas and imagination? Ideas that become so powerful in your mind and your consciousness, they seem real to you even before they become tangible. Imagination that is so strong that you can actually see it. You can actually see it. If somebody cannot see it when it is not here, then it will never be here. Start looking into the future of what you would like to accomplish, and where you would like to go, the person you would like to be. Decide what you want and then act as if you already had it. And that is to believe that what you imagine is possible for you. So the first step is to imagine what's possible. Second step, to believe. Now here's the third step. And that is to go to work and make it real. You now go to work and make it a movement. You make it tangible. You make it viable. You breathe life into it, and then you construct it. You have a lot to offer. The fact that you're still here means that your business is not through yet. People don't do what they know in life, but what they do is they operate within the context of the vision they have of themselves. So write and draw and build and play and dance and live as only you can. Make up your own rules. The rules on what is possible and impossible were made by people who had not tested the bounds of the possible by going beyond them. You must change what's possible for you. You and only you 
are the subject that impacts the burning desire in your imagination. You are living and feeling as if your future dreams are a present fact. Will it be easy? No. Will it be challenging? Yes. So you got to prepare yourself. You've got to develop yourself. As long as you're breathing, you got some more work to do. There's something else for you to achieve. Guess what? You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. So now go and make interesting mistakes. Make amazing mistakes. Make glorious and fantastic mistakes. Break rules. Leave the world more interesting for your being here. Make good art. It is possible to start with nothing and become something.